G'day. This video, we're just going to go through the uh, obviously uh, normal June 30 planning that we always do uh, with our clients. Just outline some of the areas that uh, I think are worth considering um, when it comes to our tax planning and things we may need to do, particularly with superannuation up to the end of financial year. And just to go through some of the the uh, contribution limits that are there and are forever changing. The first one I wanted to go through is the uh, the spouse contribution. Um, so for those of you that have a spouse that are earning. Um, so this is the spouse contribution, earning less than 10800 uh, per year um, and up to $13,800 uh, per year. If someone's earning less than 10800 and no more than that, you're eligible to receive a, um, a tax offset of up to $540. And to do that, you need to put in um, $3,000 into your spouse's superannuation fund in that financial year. So that's a free kick of $540, which is well worth doing. The other one, which is probably well, a lot more well known, that's the, uh, um, the co-contributions. Um, and that's where, if you're earning under, and think the figures are for this financial year, and they do change next financial year, um, $34,488, uh, and then up to Forty-nine thousand four hundred and eighty-eight. So, if you earn below uh, the thirty-four thousand uh, mark, and you put one thousand dollars into your superannuation as a non-concessional contribution, or what we used to term a personal uh, contribution, where you're not claiming it as a tax deduction, then the government will give you five hundred dollars. So, that's a fifty percent return on your money. Well worth doing. Then if we have a look at the uh, concessional uh, contribution uh, caps for this financial year, now concessional means where you're putting money into superannuation via a self-employed um, contribution, uh, where you're claiming it as a tax deduction, or for an employee, that's where you're putting money in um, via a salary sacrifice. So for those that are over aged uh, uh, 50, for, for this financial year, you can put in $35,000. For those that are under age 50, that's $30,000 um, for this financial year. So the, now the trick is the money needs to be in your super fund account um, by 30 June. So there's no, uh, the fact that you've put a, uh, if you're sending it off to an industry fund or a retail fund, um, you know, the money can't be in a check in transit. It needs to be in your account prior to 30 June. For those of a self-managed super fund that we're, we're just using a simple account at the uh, the bank, that's where you can just walk in and the money will hit very quickly. I'll also touch on the non-concessional, and that's money where you, you're putting money into superannuation and you've already paid your tax on that money, so it's an after-tax or non-concessional contribution. For those that are under a, or everyone could put in $180,000 per financial year, um, for those that are over age um, 65, you need to meet the work test, which is 40 hours worth of work over a 30 day uh, time frame. And then you can put in, after you've met the work test, put in $180,000. Um, and you're limited to that $180,000 each financial year. For those that are under age 65, you can also put in the 180 each financial year. And you have the ability to bring two year financial years forward and put in to $540,000 in the one financial year. And then you can't put any more in for the two uh, years financial years after that. So plenty of room. So if you think husband and wife, and when farms sell and you know lumpy assets come in, that's where these um, come, uh, become important. Of course, um, you know, for farmers and business owners, this can be business real property, so a farming, uh, farming land or a business property. So that's a bit of a roundup uh, leading up to the end of the uh, the financial year. Hope that's a help and uh, give us a bell if you need. Thank you.